Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cole with NathanColeFooter.com and in this video I want to show how you can do your initial setup for doing 360 virtual tours using a DSLR. Now as you may recall from other Facebook posts I've made, other videos and whatnot, that yes you can use a 360 portable camera and I use that quite a bit too, like the Ricoh Theta Z1, but when you're really wanting the high-end stuff where you can incorporate flash, get window pulls, all that, also just to get a higher quality even if you don't use flash, then of course DSLR is the way to go. Now this isn't a new technique, this has been around for quite a while, but until the advent and the rise of the 360 virtual tours recently because of the pandemic, this wasn't quite as popular to do everyday virtual tours. It's something that's done for higher end stuff like for uh, resorts and whatnot because you are going to get something as a better quality out of it. But it does take a first initial step and that's something known as finding your no parallax point. It's a one-time setup that you have to do whenever you buy a panoramic head. That's what this little clicky thing is here that the DSLR is mounted on. Um, and once you find that no parallax point, then you're really good to go. It's called a calibrated pano head at that point. Now, I show the details for these steps and a lot more in my new book, which is Virtual Tour Photography for Real Estate. And I have a link to that down in the description for this video, as well as some other pertinent links of information, some of the gear that you may be interested in. Now, I'm using a Nodal Ninja 6. It's a really Really good uh, panoramic head and one of the reasons I do that is because it has these little lock adjustments that uh, allow me to put my camera in and immediately every time it's at the no parallax point meaning I only have to do this once. Other type of pano heads will have some type of markings on them in fact the Nodal Ninja 6 does too but uh, those are sometimes a little bit hard to find it's like oh where was I it's the same thing as if you were trying to set up for instance uh, a gimbal head you know, if you're trying to do like a Ronin S, it's like, oh, you're balancing, where are my markings? So having those locks are very important, but I'm gonna show what the parallax problem is, how you can easily and very quickly set then your no parallax point so you can just get started doing this. So a little bit of background on why you wanna have that. So using a panoramic head, the idea is, is that using a fisheye lens on a DSLR, you'll take four shots around, one shot up. You go 90 degrees, you go boom, you take a shot, you rotate it to 90 degrees, do another shot, you rotate to 180 degrees, do another shot, and 270 degrees, and then what you do then, you can rotate this guy up to the ceiling and do then the uh, zenith shot, as it's called, going straight up. Now, there is a way to shoot straight down um, that you can do. A lot of times I skip that. It's known as the nadir or nadir, depending on which country you're in. Nadir's the uh, uh, common U.S. Uh, pronunciation. Nadir is more U.K. and other countries. But however you say it, it's the bottom shot. I usually leave that out, put a patch in there. Very simple to do and I show how to do that, by the way, in the book also. And I'll have upcoming tutorials on that and other techniques as well. Once I get some time, it has been a busy, busy season for virtual tours right now. So anyways, let's take a look at what the parallax problem is then to make sure that we're rotating this properly as we do and when we go up so that the idea here is that the lens, the sensor, the portion of it is in direct center of where I'm rotating. So if you'll notice here that the camera is back farther than what it normally would be if you just had it on a standard tripod head. Instead, at the center of the tripod head is the uh, the lens. And of course, that's where the sensor is picking up then the information of the input. So having that information, once your tripod is fairly level, then of course, as you're rotating around, then you're not gonna get a parallax error. Let's see what it is. Now, the easiest way to actually test a parallax error is that you have two objects, one that's near and one that's far. And so what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna set this up so I can have a, uh, an, in, an in picture, in picture, in frame uh, little diagram here going on. So let me just get this started here so we can watch the video as I'm doing this and what's happening. So you can do this in live view your camera and once again what you're trying to do is set up a near object to a far object in this case near object is just a light stand far object is the center crease between those two front doors so right now it's centered we can see that if I zoom in it's going to be centered that's not a problem but when I start rotating my pano head will that still line up now I'm on my no parallax point here so as I rotate one direction yeah everything's bending but I can see that it is still lined up 
So that's exactly what I want to see. That's a no parallax point, no problem. Now, let's see what it looks like if I have a parallax error, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now take my uh, camera and put it in some other place. So I'm going to move it back on this rail, and now I should get a parallax error. So now as I start rotating, you can see that now I'm not lining up where I was. So the top of that head of the, uh, the light stand is not exactly where it should be. So easy thing to correct on that. Let me put it back here on the, uh, the no parallax point. Is all that you do, uh, be very careful here doing it. So all that you do is just, you start out just like I was doing before, seeing where that is, okay? You've got that all lined up. Now the next thing is you wanna take your camera and rotate it down to try to find the center of the tripod. All these uh, heads have this little uh, datum point that you can then rotate your camera down and see. So you keep it in live view mode and then you tilt your camera straight down. Then once you do, you just use live view on your camera and make sure that at the center of your camera, maybe you have crosshairs or you've got the center focal point, you make sure that that's over the center. If it isn't, then you just move this uh, rail back and forth. So this has an adjustment and on the Nodal Ninja 6, it's got a little lock here too. So you can make sure that that's slid to that position each and every time. So that's good. Once that's in, then it's just the next step of rotating this guy back. So we'll loosen him up, rotate him back to where he is. And then what you do is, as you're doing the adjustment, I'll turn this off now, as you're doing, like we were showing the rotation back and forth like that, what you do is you're gonna start moving the camera back and forth on this rail. So there's an adjustment here, and when I had it in, the, in a bad parallax position, that's when the camera was farther back here. So you'll be moving it up, forward, back like that until you find that position where you're at your no parallax point. Let me just put that back to where that parallax is. You can hear it clicked to that little lock position. So once you have that then, and you're in your no parallax point, then you can ro start rotating around and everything that you do for every single one of your panos then is not going to have a parallax error. If you do have a parallax error, you're going to get some stitching errors. And stitching, if you're not familiar with it, is the process of taking those four shots around, the one shot up, and the optional one down, and having those turn into a one big 360 panoramic that's then, when you host it on a 360 virtual tour host, that turns into then that virtual reality experience. So you don't want to have any stitching areas where things didn't line up and then you start getting these weird lines in certain places where those individual images were, were not able to blend correctly. Anyways, I've got more videos coming up that will then show how to start taking from the very basics some of these shots to do a basic pano, eventually working our way up into using then flash and incorporating that so you can also do window pulls and get some fantastic, beautiful views to the outside. It's very important for like water properties, view properties, and it's something that you you can then provide clients if they say, well, I never really liked the 360 virtual tours. I know I need them, but the quality is so low. Then there's upscale type packages. And I talk about the pricing in the book also. Once again, there's a link to that in the description for this video. Anyways, I hope this was useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something. Thank you.